Coming up in episode 47. I wasn't allowed to dance with boys until I turned 15. <laughs> that was it. I wanted to turn 15 because I was going to be able to go to dances and dance with boys. And there was nothing my father could do about it because that was the rule. <laughs> but it also meant I had to learn how to dance to that kind of music. Welcome to another episode of The Little Radio Show. My name is Sandra Fernandez, and I'm joined by my co-hosts, Juan Alaniz and Angelica Casares, and we're bringing you small talk about big topics. This week, The Little Radio Show is on a recording hiatus, so we're bringing you a compilation of outtakes from previous episodes. These are portions of conversations that had to be pulled out of episodes due to time constraints and didn't quite make it into a digital extras episode. Just a reminder that you can catch us every week on Thursdays at 2 p.m. Central Time on hmsnetradio.org. Our show archives and the link to our iTunes and Stitcher channels are available at thelittleradioshow.com. Most new listeners of this show found out about it through a friend or a blog post. If you're someone who has told someone else about The Little Radio Show, thank you so much. Really, it means a lot to us. Keep telling your friends, and if you happen to write something about the show, send us a link or tag us somehow so we can share it. In one of our frequent conversations about music, we delved into our histories with Tejano music, regional music, and yes, Juan even goes into his love for J-Lo once again. Trust me, it gets better. I hope to raise... do you remember Tejano? I hope to raise... See, I never learned to dance Tejano. My youngest sister was really into Tejano music. She did all the clubs, and she had, like, the Tejano wear and whatever. I never learned to dance Tejano. I remember Tejano Tejano because that was huge when we were, like, when I was growing up, and it was, like, like, they had the school had, like, Tejano dances, and, like, they would open up the whole, like, Jim (laughs) Acapitorium. Jim Acapitorium, yeah, (laughs) basically. (laughs) And they would move all the tables and you'd have balloons out. And yeah. it was like all like the um, Emilio Navaira, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. Elsa, Elsa Garcia, Selena, of course. And they had the, yeah, and then, uh, like, they would switch into like the bookies and stuff. Yeah. We have a, a, a lot of pictures. And then shortly after that was Quebradita. Like, like Quebradita. Uh, see, I never learned Quebradita. See, I, I never enjoyed it. I would go to the Jaripeos, like with oh. my sisters and we would see that. And it was, yeah. and it was like, and I would just, I'm still amazed at the way they would throw them up. And then catch oh, them, yeah. and then like go under. There's still places da, 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 da. where they do, where they they do all. You know, there's still the Hano music is still alive and well. It's just yeah. not as popular yeah. as it used to be, and, and that kind of stuff. You know, when um, so uh, going back to stuff that you like, my dad was very traditional. Okay. And so I wasn't allowed to dance with boys until I turned 15. <laughs> that was it. I wanted to turn 15 because I was going to be able to go to dances and dance with boys. And there was nothing my father could do about it because that was the rule. <laughs> but it also meant I had to learn how to dance to that kind of music. All my friends had quinceañeras and I had them buy me a car. But, you know, I lived in Mexico at the time and Liberación is from my town. Uh-huh. So every... Every Christmas, Liberación played like 10 times during December. We got sick of them. Um, <laughs> uh, Pegaso played oh, at yeah, my Pegaso. graduation. Mm. Really? Yes, because they were from the town where I went to high school. Oh, wow. I stood up in a quinceañera where Bronco played. Oh, man. You said Bronco. Bronco was oh, so yes. good. Like, right at the beginning, oh, yeah. right before they hit it big, big to where they wouldn't do the little the little events anymore. Yeah, one of my friends had had Bronco playing. At, so, you know, so I grew up. The this is the music. like, you know, this this was the regional stuff of where I grew up. And of course, what did I listen to? I listened to the American station out of Monterrey. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, like we, the English music that I listen to is very across the board. Like yes. I listen to uh, everything. Stop lying. Thing. All right, I, I, I get. No, stop lying. No, but I anything like, like, and everything. J Lo. No, that's like, it. I like the, if oh, she, hold it, hold it. J Lo is English music. No, all right. No, I if like, she uh, if she played quebradita music, you would listen to it. If she well, played Noterna, you would listen to but it. That's beside the point. I'm gonna listen to whatever that she does. But, <laughs> but in, you, in general, like music, I like like I like uh, Gloria Stefan. Like I like. Um, you know, things that are occurring now. I don't really like a lot of the new music. And, and me and Edgar had go back and forth because I'm like, he's like, that girl that sings really loud and hits those really high notes and she sounds really bad. Right, Carrie. I'm like, she's the best singer. <laughs> don't leave her alone. <laughs> 
The following outtake is part of a conversation about gender roles in families and in parenting especially, as well as a different take or our differences of opinion on the word machismo. <laughs> and so here's the thing. When one of my sisters uh, went back to work after she had um, her son, she got a lot of flack from people. She's like, what do you mean? You're not taking longer? You're not going to take the year off to say you don't want to spend time with your child <laughs> yeah, I know. and my sister's like well why is it so bad for me to want to return <laughs> it doesn't mean that i don't love him i want to return to my job i like what i do and for some reason apparently that made her a bad mom my brother-in-law uh, because on the being other a bad hand, mom makes you a bad person my brother-in-law Evidently. on the other hand if he watched quote unquote the kids or the kids for one afternoon, got nothing but praises. They're his kids. <laughs> you know, no offense. They're his kids. One afternoon is just one afternoon and seven days of that week. Yeah. You know, no. So he got a lot of praise for doing what she did every day because for some reason that just was unexpected or outside the norm. Yeah. Now, I, I do want to go back to something that we were talking about earlier. And I think, and I've always, I've said this many times, but uh, like on my blog and different places that I think the word machismo, machismo gets a bad rap so many times and i don't think that it's necessarily (laughs) a bad word i don't believe it's a bad word because just like sometimes you need you know a certain amount of feminism sometimes you need a little a certain amount of machismo and i don't think that it should have as as bad of a stigma as it does well i i'm taking the bus home (laughs) i'm taking the bus home that's it i'm taking the bus home but i just just wanted to go on the record on saying that (laughs) my, my, my problem with that is i've lived in mexico where the laws are very different the community is very different once you've lived in a in a country where um you can be asked to do a pregnancy test before they give you a job Mm -hmm. um it's a little bit different but when you when you see companies that won't hire married women because they're going to have uh they're going to have babies where you have friends who were quite literally bullied out of engineering schools because only three girls were in the entire engineering school and by the end of that year only one made it because they were so bullied it takes on a different tack the u.s is so far ahead when it comes to that stuff mexico machismo is a completely different thing than what you uh, would uh consider it to, be it to be yeah and it's i think that that's true but you know that going that's back, the extreme and i think that there's going, an extreme to feminism too you know there like, is so no, absolutely that's I, I why think, i'm saying there is an extreme to feminism that's why i caveat it with saying <laughs> i am not you know everyone would, <laughs> if there's some people who you say the word feminist and they're like oh well you you must hate men no i love men <laughs> and the men in my in my life are f- wonderful 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 even if you have to bump them upside the head every once in a while <laughs> remind them can I can I go back to the gender roles okay. really quick? Um, we were talking about raising different, uh, about how we raise different children in yes. different ways. And I, I just thought about it. And Edgar, I do raise him to be, you know, because in heart and heart and all, because I was raised around, you know, my Mexican culture. We I do teach him and I do show him so certain things like opening the door for yeah. his cousins or walking his cousin home or making sure he does... Um, even when his cousins are older than him. Yes. It's like you have to, you need to open, you need to make sure that doesn't fall on her. And I'm because, Latina enough that I expect that. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and sometimes I'm like, is there, is there a double standard that I'm doing there? Is, is it? But this is the way I want my son to, to view the world. Not be, every woman he sees in front of him, if she is not, he, I don't want him to be like the you knight in shining armor. Respect. Yes. Yeah, most definitely, at, you know. Or I want him to be, I want him to, I want him to be a citizen to where if ever help is needed from a male, because males, I believe males have that courtesy enough with each other. Like if they can, they can see one or the other in need, they'll need to help each other. But I seen that as growing up, I didn't, I couldn't, I feel like I couldn't do that with males. Like I think some males weren't as open to like helping me, you know, say in per se, like that I could go and ask for quick assistance or something. Mm-hmm. I, you kind of, when you had a flat tire, you kind of just stood around it and see watch whoever <laughs> passes by to help you. But I never like, I never find inclined to go and ask somebody, ask somebody. And so I want Edgar to feel like, I want Edgar to like, I guess, give that presence. Like you can, you can come and ask me for help. So I need him to, you know, 
help and usually maybe that's just my upbringing but yes i do maybe i do a double standard where i need him to go and open the there's door and make sure <laughs> in, the, in the way you like there's different expectations and yeah. sometimes sometimes it's not subconscious even the things you do because you don't really yes. it's just your it's just your culture what you've grown up with the following two clips were cut out of an episode earlier this year about the importance of higher education, both four-year degrees and technical degrees as well, technical certifications and technical skills. The clip includes a discussion about how the lack of funds can impact a student's ability to take internships during college. Clip number one. So going back, I think we all agree that maybe a four-year degree may not be the most uh, and that's for everybody. And that the way where do we when we say a four year degree for everyone, we you know, it's not not might not be, you know, something you're looking for to do. I'm I think again, we need people with trade skills. Of course. Many, many people with trade skills. And I think well, uh, in reconsider. Houston, in Houston especially, uh we've got a lot of opportunities for people with technical skills. In the oil fields. In the and, oil fields. Yeah, and what not even, just in the uh, oil even fields. Uh, nano degrees and things like that. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there are all sorts of stuff uh that are available uh for people with uh tech with uh technical certificates and degrees. I know that some people do have their four year degree and they go back and they get their nano skills because it turns out whatever degree they got they're better at writing, so they need to have a business <laughs> writing class, and mm-hmm. they get that that nano degree within a year or whatever, and all of a sudden they're making they're prospering. I mean, I got a, so I got a corporate communications degree, and it's what like I don't know how many years, like over a decade since I graduated, and I'm just now like in a field that's corporate. <laughs> communication. Yeah, I'm I am I am really weird. I actually got a job in the thing that I studied and stayed in that field for like 15 years after graduation. After graduation. So, uh, yeah, I understand how weird that is these and days. I, and, I I know my, uh, and I would tell my siblings when they were going to school, I was like, you know, don't even worry about, you know, like, when you go first go into school, like, take your basics. Yes. Don't even worry about, like, what you're going to major in or not. Because by the time you get to the point where you can pick a major, your mind's <clears> going <throat> to, whatever you choose is probably going to be completely different than what you had originally thought of. Because my degree from when I first went into school and when I actually had to pick a major was completely different. And I was very practical because I was already working somewhere where I was like, oh, well, corporate communications would be a a, a logical next step. And that's how I selected my degree. Clip number two. But but yeah. I'd like to go back to what Juan was saying about internships. There's an interesting argument being made about the internships being uh, one of the things that are actually dividing the haves from the have-nots. Mm-hmm. Because there are certain degrees that to do a really good internship, they're not all available in your city. Yeah. So if it's talking about taking an internship for summer in another city and they're not paying you any money... Your family or someone has to actually pay for your room and board and other expenses for those months. And if you don't have the money saved up and your family isn't able to sustain you, those internships are not available for you. And see, and that's where I think, and I, I that's where I think that the community comes in because you know, as somebody who's, and why mentorships are so important because you know, as somebody who's struggled, you know, if you struggled in your in your own experience to get to a certain level of professionalism in your career then it's important to kind of give a hand up to those that are coming behind you because you know in in a lot of cases you don't it's it's the have the it's right it's the have and the have nots because you don't have the luxury of oh yeah well i know this person who's 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 connected or who's already working here who can get me into this place that i want need to get experience and you kind of stumble on those opportunities and you know the, and then from that you kind of you know um grow and you go into certain areas and you build certain expertises so i think part of that is when you are in a position to help somebody that maybe, you know, doesn't not that they don't don't know any better, but that they just don't have the background to say, you know, this is really going to benefit me because of X, Y and Z. Mm -hmm. It's kind of sometimes you have to connect the dots for them. The next three clips are from a conversation about getting older and in particular about how we're all dealing with our parents and grandparents getting older, both from the logistics standpoint and how it's affecting us emotionally. Clip number one. Well, my grandmother lived on her own and we uh, paid someone to stay there with her. Actually, we paid two someone, someone during the day and someone someone at night, right? Mm -hmm. And when we first got someone to stay with her during the day, she refused to feed her. She didn't want want somebody there during the day. Well, since I don't want her here, I'm not feeding her. And I'm like, are you kidding me? (laughs) She didn't want somebody there. She can do it fine. She can do fine. She could barely walk. 
She didn't want anybody in her, ho her home, though, and she got overridden. Well, she did the passive aggressive, I'm not going to, you know, co cooperate with what you're telling me to do thing. Clip number two. Yeah. We were, um, so we're like, as you mentioned, Sandra thinks a lot. We're a little bit older. And we were looking oh, at properties. Are in your 30s. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> we were looking at properties for that. For the basis of that, yes. we're actually acres at this point because okay. um, we want to be able to to have you know if we need to you know add add on you know structures to the land so we can have our aging you know family members move in you know family members like in laws and 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 you know my my mom or my dad or you know at this point like my aunt who has no children if she needs to be like that's my that's my basis behind it. That's my thought process behind it is we're looking for acres at this point. So, and you know, it is right. Who's going to take care of us? I don't know. You know, maybe we'll think about it when we're 50. <laughs> <laughs> and let's hope that um, they don't say the things about us that we're saying about us. I'm sure they will. <laughs> <laughs> Clip number three. Well, you know, yeah. I love my parents. I, you know, mm -hmm. I do. My dad had Parkinson's. And so we did have to go into the... I had to deal with the um, the taking care of your parents' issues much earlier than most people did. Mm -hmm. um, I had to help with uh, the decisions and moving him into a nursing home after my mom took care of him at home for three years because it was at the point where he wasn't receiving the care that he needed and she was um, – she was uh, – her health was diminishing because she was putting so much mm -hmm. into taking care of him and a decision had to be made. And of course, yeah, as you said, in the Latino community, we don't do this. So mm -hmm. I got, we got a lot of back, back, uh, you know, a lot, a of, lot of bad criticism, yeah. criticism people Judge telling us that we had thrown my dad away. My dad wouldn't speak to me for months because mm. he didn't want to go into a nursing mm. home, mind you. And I imagine, a decision, it was a, I imagine it was grueling for you. Oh, and it must not okay. been a, a, the best. I have, like, you, I know, have, is, the you know, situation. I've had a lot of um, very stressful jobs. I've been in situations very stressful. The worst day of my life, I, having to say, sign mm -hmm. my dad into a nursing home mm -hmm. and to admit that we couldn't care for him at home anymore. Mm -hmm. um, when he's, you know... Um, berating me the entire way in uh, about how bad a daughter I was. Eventually, he came to understand. Mm -hmm. Eventually, because his health improved, even. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. His health improved. He was uh, not taking medications appropriately. He would bully my mom into giving him too much of one thing and too little of another. My mom, after three years, was tired mm -hmm. of arguing with him. Nurses are different. Nurses do this not have the, yeah. I've been married to you for 30 years and want to give in to you and I don't like seeing you suffer, you know, needlessly kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, although I'm not saying that nurses like pe to see people <laughs> suffer. But it's, they, they, they don't they have do the emotion. They, they yeah. don't give in to emotional guilt quite mm -hmm. as easily. And so my, my father was over medicated. He was all sorts of other stuff. But I had to... There were endless meetings with his um, with his neurologist and with the social worker and with the care, uh, the people in charge of the um, of the uh, facility where he was, and then you know coordinating um, holidays so that we could have him in and out before he got too tired. Thanksgiving um, was usually we had two Thanksgivings. We had a small Thanksgiving earlier in the day without everybody. So that we could celebrate with him. Then we were turned him to the nursing home. And then we had the actual Thanksgiving with lots and lots of people. Because by then he was in a wheelchair. And our last clip comes from a recent conversation about Latinos and entertainment. And quite frankly, about how few there are. Yeah. I mean, you know, even what's his name? Um, George Lopez. George Lopez. Yeah. He launched the show. It didn't last. I mean, it, well, he, it did well I mean, enough. Did, it did well enough for it to go a, on for a couple of seasons. I mean, he had a pretty good success with that show, and you know, he—I think he probably he made his claim to fame was really that show. No, 
Not yeah. the George Lopez show. He had a show that ran oh, okay. on cable. And oh, I think yeah, it only yeah, I lasted that. Yeah. I mean, I think it only lasted um maybe a year or two. Mm-hmm. Uh and it didn't really do well and But the thing that's is, the thing that's the thing there's there's for being a rea- uh, TV host or you don't. Here's the thing. <laughs> there's an a range of actors and actresses and I think maybe it's going back to the same ones going back to the, because if you have a range of actresses on that side that play more the Anglo side, and then you have that range of actresses that you play more of the uh, of the African American side, and then you have the range of the Latinos that play that side too, you can't expect them all to fight for one role when you're only doing one show. Like there has to or, be more. Yeah. There or, has or to be for, more. For example, and you know we're hearing a lot of this come out of Hollywood right now mm-hmm. about how oh. I went to try out for a show and they go, oh, it's not a Latina role. Yeah. And we're like, well, do you hear my English? I can't speak English too. But you know, the thing about Superstore, it wasn't written for a Latina. I know. It just, she just happened to be Latina. But, and if you look at the, the, uh, what some of the writing, some of the writing is because she she is Latina. She is an employee who happens to be Latina, not a Latina employee. Yeah. And And they're following the, the, you know, the, premise of other shows you know that are like a behind the scenes look at the day-to-day life yes. of you know some type of I like career that. i like that so I they're like following that. that premise and they're just infusing they're just putting in a latina who's you know can carry that role so you know I but th- here's the thing here's what i'm saying I, I love america ferrera like she like the woman the girl knows what she's doing but she can't play all the roles well no no and one they're, can they're, play all the roles exactly so there has to be and it but it seems so wouldn't you think after watching all the roles that she's been successful in, like Betty Lafayette? I mean, it, she did awesome. Well, there's this, roles that she's not been so successful. That I mean, like, it, it, it uh, can Cesar, be. Cesar Chavez. <laughs> that was the movie. That movie that was, was bad. That, everybody was bad in that. I love you know, <laughs> I the actors are all fabulous that were in there, and there was something about that movie that I'm like, I want to love this. I really, really want to love mm-hmm. this movie. Why do I hate it so much? And there've been <laughs> ro- like there've been roles that I didn't like her in that I just found her annoying. And the same thing with Eva Longoria. Like I just didn't really enjoy her in those roles. But for the casting that they've done for these two shows, but that's what I, mean. I really enjoy them. Should they have kept casting them like on and on and on and on? Like the, there's an, a range of talent out there, and if we Are stick them saying, in more, you're saying that why do we the same people get cast over and over for the same? You know, for because the same they're things. proven quantities. They're popular. They're names. Yeah, I understand that's that. Kind of- when you put a movie out there and mm-hmm. you've just invested 147 million dollars yeah. and you yeah. paid somebody a million dollars to be in your movie, you want it to be someone who's going to draw crowds in. Yeah. yeah, and I do so understand that. So it's a vicious that. cycle. You get famous by being in these movies and have them be a success, but you're not cast in other movies until you've had a movie that was a success. But you and you and you. <laughs> I don't like that. You to, <laughs> and you still have to pay your dues. But look at yes. somebody like Gina Rodriguez, who was virtually a no, you know a nobody, like in the in the entertainment world, yes. um, a couple of years ago, and then she just kind of has skyrocketed. And Jane the Virgin, you know, has kind of been her claim to fame. Oh, and, I okay. love Jane the Virgin. It's so funny. Okay, so yeah. here's here's we here we are. Jane the Virgin. Now she's in the and I did I do maybe. Maybe if you're losing, if, if anybody's listening out there, let's see if we can make this happen. If Jane the Virgin, like once that air goes off, we can make her to an actual superstar where she's just a star. And all those other Latina roles, we can cast other Latinas. But she's like already maybe a star. that should happen. She's already crossed that bridge. And the thing is that she's not only done it on her on that show, but she's also done it by being very vocal about the Hispanic community and being very vocal about, you know, diversity and, you know, things that people can stand so can stand behind. Do we have a Latina Jennifer Lawrence? No, we don't have a Gen- Latina Correct. Jennifer Lawrence. Correct. Yet. Well, she's out there. We just, how can she get it discovered if, Well, I'm hoping you know? this is the graduation of Latino TV yeah. or Latino entertainment and that we can have more shows and the, bring in the new people that are, that are up and coming. And But, you know, it started, this is how um, African-Americans uh, in television and entertainment, uh, the issue is uh, where they're still not adequately represented. But now you're seeing films and shows in other uh, venues where they're actually getting these wonderful roles. They're showing uh, where they show their uh, culture and their lives and their families in a way where they're rich and they're poor mm-hmm. and they're criminals and they're lawyers and et cetera. And there's more of a variety. Is it accurate and equal yet? No, of course not. The, the but same it's thing not goes, so much of an oddity. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, they've been at it longer. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. And, but Latinos, it's we're still having that problem. It was, for example, it's like you know, I, I left them, and we've had this conversation before. I left them uh, that I get people talk to me on the phone, and if I don't tell them my last name, they're all like, uh, "Yeah, I, I need to see, speak to someone who is Latina," and I'm like, "Yeah, so um, Fernandez." But, but you know, when, uh, <laughs> even, but when uh, Chris, well, Chris Rock, when he made his speech at the Oscars, yes, like I thought, you know, I was like, okay, you know, he's making his speech, but. I I kind of felt ex- I didn't feel really like that were, he was talking Include about him. me because he, he didn't he never it. said like brown he never said latino he he always kept it black and white and i was like well that i don't i don't include myself in either of those categories so i just i don't feel like that diversity that yeah. we're talking about includes me or people who here's look like me. here's the honest truth actually sometimes the actresses and actors you don't even know they're latino unless they tell you they're latino and then sometimes they don't even say they're latino because yeah. they don't want to be you know casted as just being you know for those latino roles because if you aren't there because our well, skin colors are such an arrangement sheen changed his name yeah but I mean, now yeah. you have like all these like you know the Samas, the J Los, the Zoe yeah. Saldanas, the Rosario Dawson's, all those people who are Latinos and they're claiming it and they're not they're not you know backing away. from It seems it. like yeah, because it seems like there's a stigma. So it, we keep going down that route where it's just black and white, where it's just this and this. I, I mean, I understand there's nobody nobody's like really against anybody, but I don't I don't want to sit well, there and say that I'm Latina and then get if you talk to anyone that. who worked through like the civil rights movement or who worked in academia or whatever it was actually a very common practice for um, what you would call mainstream resources to pit African American uh, community against uh, uh, the Hispanic community when we went for uh, grants and other stuff mm-hmm. like that we've got one we can either fund you or we can fund them yeah but it's funny that um, a lot of people are saying, well, Leo DiCaprio, you're welcome, though, that a Mexican got you an I Oscar. Know. <laughs> like it took a Mexican to get you the Oscar. Thank you very much. <laughs> this is your neighbor in Cap- Leave him alone. Hey, it was his time. <laughs> hey, and, and the funny thing is, it's for a movie I didn't even like, so. Oh, <laughs> that is funny. And in the shameless self-promotion part of the show, I have a question for you. Will you take a moment and let us know if you enjoy the podcast? What do you like about it? What are we doing well and what can we improve? Please send us a comment on Facebook or Twitter and tag us. We always appreciate feedback from our listeners. You can find links to all of our social channels on thelittleradioshow.com. Thanks again for tuning in to The Little Radio Show, where we're bringing you small talk about big topics. I'm your host, Angelica Casares, and I want to invite you to visit our iTunes channel to leave us a rating and a review. It's a really great way to show us your support, and we really appreciate the love. Find the link on our iTunes channel at thelittleradioshow.com. <laughs>